Hey guys, what's up? It's Saint Nick, and I'm back with another video for you guys. Today we're doing something different. I'm going to go over James chapter 1, but we're going to go through the first eight verses. This will be a three-part series, Oh, just over the first, the first chapter of James. So, if you have some paper, take some notes, or whatever you want to do. If you just want to listen, just listen, but I hope everybody's doing good today. And we're going to go over this briefly but powerfully. Okay, James, brother of Jesus. Good book, guys. It's pretty short. I think it's it's only a couple chapters. I want to say five. Uh, yeah, five chapters. Five chapters in James. So it's a short book, but it's powerful. It speaks about trials and tribulations in the first chapter. Again, we're going over the first eight verses, and we'll start right now. James chapter one. Verse 1, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes scattered among the nations, greetings. All right, here we go. Verse 2, consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. All right. <clears throat> Consider it pure joy, my brothers. Pure joy, he says, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Whenever. Let's take the ever out of whenever. When. Right? Whenever meaning when. When meaning during. See how it doesn't say if. If you face trials of many kinds, it says whenever you face trials of many kinds. That means we're going to face trials. So you will face trials of many kinds. Expect it. Verse 3. Because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. A couple synonyms for perseverance are dedication, determination, endurance, persistence. Excuse me. Stamina. Okay, so whenever you face trials of many kinds... Consider it pure joy, he says, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance, develops stamina, again, endurance, determination, which is powerful. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. That's verse four. Mature and complete, you may ask, Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete. Mature and complete in what, you may ask, right? Mature and complete Christians. Mature and complete men of God. Mature and complete women of God. Vessels for God. So God can use you for his purposes. You need to be mature so he can use you. You can't be an immature going around not knowing what you're doing and be unstable in the Lord and him be able to use you how he wants to use you. Right? Makes sense. So again, let's go back for a second. Whenever you face trials of many kinds, you guys, we will face trials of many kinds here. We will. And we do. And you are. And you know you are. Right? Trials can be anything... And it's going to be different for most people. My trials and tribulations are probably different than your trials and tribulations. Right? Or excuse me, trials, I said. Your trials may be temptations through drug addiction, pornography, lust of the eyes. Lust of the flesh. God just may be, I mean, and is, putting everybody under and through different trials. Again, your trials aren't my trials and my trials aren't your trials. But we, a lot of people may be going through and probably are going through similar trials, you know? Anyways, like I said, I wanted to touch on that. How it says when means during, you know? During. Because we're all going through. You're going through trials right now. You may know it. You may not know it. 
they may be coming your way if you're not. But I can guarantee everybody is. We all are. All right, guys. Verse 5. All right, verse 5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. You guys, ask God for wisdom. You want to be wise in the eyes of the Lord and a holy wisdom. You want to be wise in the eyes of the Lord through a holy wisdom. I'll say it again. Holy wisdom, God's wisdom, not your wisdom, not man wisdom, wisdom of God that will direct you and align your path to how it should be. In Jesus' name. Verse 6. But when he asks, this is important, guys, he must believe and not doubt because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. When he asks, he must believe. I think, like, we may just kind of blow past that and not really understand or put full effort in that. He must believe. That's like all your marbles need to put in. Every bit of your faith and belief, you must believe. And do not doubt. Because he who doubts, a couple more words for doubts are disbelief, he who disbelieves, he who distrusts, he who is hesitant, is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. You know how waves are in oceans, <laughs> different directions, not going one way most of the time, getting tossed to and fro. You don't want to be like that, and you, God does not want you to be like that, and he's saying you must believe. He must believe and not doubt. Verse 7. Here, I'll go over 6 again. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. Verse 7. This man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. Are you a double-minded man? Are you a double-minded woman? Perhaps unbelief has put you there. Maybe you have unbelief. Pray for conviction. Pray for God to just convict you with full belief. You want to believe. Maybe there's just that little part of you that's unsure. Ask God to change that, and you will. Put your trust in the Lord. Proverbs 3, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Right? <clears throat> Excuse me. He is a double minded man and unstable in all he does, verse 8 says. Don't be double minded. God hates double mindedness. You know? So ask and believe without doubt. That's the sum up of today's message. I know this was a little different than some of my other videos. I tried to have it more structured, though. Um. In the sense of verses 1 through 8, you know, and kind of just touched on them, for, broke some of the words down. If you guys liked today's video, go ahead and drop a like. Go ahead and comment. Go ahead and let me know if you liked the video, because I'm going to try to do more of these. Remember, we just went through 1 through 8 today. It's going to be, this is just chapter 1 of James. It's going to be a three-part chapter, and we're going to go in deep on it, okay? I tried to go deep. I'll try to make me maybe make the next one more. But anyways, I hope today blessed you. I hope that it touched your spirit. I hope that the Holy Spirit convicted you of something in that. Just be strong, guys, okay? Don't be double-minded. Believe. Believe. He must believe, James says. Come on, we're talking Jesus' brother here. He, he had to have known what he was talking about. Anyways, God bless every one of you. That's part one of chapter one. Two more parts to come, just for the first chapter, and we got five chapters. This will be exciting. I don't know why, but I felt God lead me to do James. So James is going to be the first first book of this type of teaching I will do. Love you guys. God bless every one of you. 
I'll pray over you guys really quick. Bow your heads, close your eyes, and just absorb. Father, I pray over every man and woman listening to this message, God. I pray that it anoints them and that it convicts their spirit with truth, God, through your spirit, Father. I pray that your angels guard them, God, and protect them and keep their ways pure and straight, Father. Keep us away from sin. Keep us close to Jesus. Guide us, guard us, Father, as you do. Thank you, Father. Bless these people, and I plead the blood of Jesus over every single one of them. May God be with you guys. See you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.